Rocky Mountain Sasquatch. I'm up here with Sasquatch Off-Road. He got us access to private properties I've been trying to get on for many years because of the Bigfoot sightings here. I know a few of people that have come face to face with Bigfoot in Hard Scrabble Creek. Matthew Anderson, he does the Sasquatch Off-Road. You'll have to check out his channel, his videos, but we're gonna look around. Both the sightings, or actually three of the sightings I know of happened uh, in the spring and summertime. I would expect the creature to be down in the valleys instead of up in the eight to 10 foot snow. We're getting record snow this year. So we're gonna take a look around. The snow's tough for us to move around in, but it's gonna be easier for us to find tracks if there's any up here. Look how deep the snow is. I, th I actually think it's deeper than this because I think I... Yeah, you're not hitting yeah. all the way to the bottom. Yeah, sometimes it goes to my knees. So this gate right here, it drops down to the river. Yep, right there. And, then... and the willows. And, oh, look, there's oak brush on the other side of the, the creek. Yeah, so I think if, I can't remember exactly how his property goes. We can go down that way and cross the river if there's uh -huh. a spot, I don't know how deep it is right now. Or we can go that way because it'll go that way more also but right. i think that's more like well his horses might be up there i don't remember exactly where his horses are okay so we can go down further and cross or we can get down there and see if we can find a spot to cross it'll go down that way also then once we cross the river we'll get onto his grandma's land also and his grandma's land goes up more up that way yeah all this property that you guys can see even the these mountain tops are all private so we need to stay on the lots that we have permission for which i'm perfectly fine with because bigfoot is not going to sit in the same spot that it was seen no and like you know we can probably we can come back here in the summer also and then once uh we can talk to a little more people a little later and see if we can get access again later on man i should have brought my gators i've just <laughs> we get up here and we're like oh we should have brought our snowshoes <laughs> should have brought our gators i mean look how deep this is if bigfoot's been through here recently we won't have a problem finding his tracks yeah, it's nice over right here yeah i bet you we go through the ice there's a beaver dam over there wow this is a pretty cool area I could see in the spring and summertime how thick and good cover all this is. Brand new willow shoots starting. I know the moose love those and I think the Bigfoot does too. Wow. I think this is... oh, that's ice. Too, but <laughs> I didn't film that. Me cross Matt find, found a place to cross the ice that I think is safe. We just uh, determined he weighs more than I do. So. <laughs> Oh, there's a, I busted through the embankment. Oh. oh, I was standing back so I wouldn't get whipped. <laughs> <laughs> My buddy Mike's the worst one for whipping you, man. <laughs> oh gosh. I remember one time hiking and uh, he whipped one of those and it hit a wasp nest. Yeah, my, and for some reason they zeroed in on my buddy Sean and stung the crap out of his ears. <laughs> that would suck. Yeah. yeah I, uh, I tried to hold it from whipping me, buddy. I did it my dad one time. Uh huh. It was accidental, but he, uh, he made sure that I didn't forget it. <laughs> <laughs> if you're an experienced hiker, you know not to follow someone too close or you're gonna get whipped. 
Yeah. <laughs> and these things aren't uh, very, very fun. Oh, these are Russian olive thorns. Yeah. Oh yeah, that is a baby Russian olive. And cottonwood trees. I don't know which way to go now. <laughs> I'm glad it's into a trap. Um, and out through here. Here's some tracks. Oh yeah. Those yeah. look like they're probably Maybe we people. Those. <laughs> yeah, those uh I think they uh, come across on a fallen over log or something. That, that could very well be. They're about 12, 13 inches long. Yeah, it's uh pretty deep here. Um Those tracks head back to where we were. There's Bigfoot food over there. You can see his head. Yeah, I see him moving. I don't know if the camera will pick him up through the brush, but. A turkey over there moving, which I think it'd be a nice Thanksgiving dinner for Bigfoot. When we go in these Bigfoot sighting areas, we also try to figure out why the Bigfoot's there. The turkeys and the grouse and the deer in this area is a good protein source, mm. along with the fish in the creek. Yeah, they're not very far from a water source. And I was admiring all the oak brush over here. That means uh, millions and zillions and billions of... There's turkey feathers all the way, all over right here. Oh, turkey may have got eaten right here. Good possibility because there's uh, maybe coyote tracks also. Yeah, those look like they could be coyote. Look, there's more of it right here. I think there's part of a carcass under the snow right there. He may have uh, buried it for future. Oh, yeah. Or the snow just come in and buried the remaining part of the carcass. It looks like it, uh, there's a den right here of some sort. Yeah, something ate a turkey right here. And it probably napped right there. May very well have ambushed right there. Look at more yeah. down in here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. You guys might not be able to see those feathers. Get the light just right for you people. Okay, one of the people, when they come down in the willows, the Bigfoot was laying in the willows watching them. Now, if it's patient and lays in one spot long enough, it could snatch a turkey. Oh, yeah. It could snatch a grouse. It could snatch the coyote and the foxes that hunt these things too. We're still in the right land. Look at all the, the turkey tracks everywhere. Now, if you were a, a predator, you would recognize by the smell or the tracks that they use this area a lot and you could pick out a great place to ambush when they come through. And we just saw a turkey take off. Not fly, but walk away from us over that direction. Starting to snow. Just a sprinkling. Last night I got a little worried with much snow was coming down. I had to shovel and snow blow my driveway last night. And then I was hoping I didn't have to do it again this morning. This morning I got up and it was only like a half an inch. And I'm like, hey, I'm just going to leave it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing has pointed. There's no, been no research yet that they do hibernate. So, I haven't heard of anything, and there's been a lot of encounters still. I have done, I have done so many uh, January Bigfoot investigations right after someone has saw one or filmed one, like uh, the Provo Canyon one where I climbed to the top of the foothill. That one they filmed on January 1st, and I was at the top of that mountain on January 3rd finding its tracks. Oh, yeah. So, places that we go that they, they frequent a lot, where we find their tracks like Sasquatch Canyon in Utah on the south side of the Uintas, they slow down, it seems like, their activity in the winter, but they don't stop. But I think they slow down, just like I do. <laughs> I slow down and I gain weight. <laughs> that winter insulation. <laughs> Snowshoes. <laughs> We're stopping and glassing. He's gonna use his binoculars and I'm just gonna use the camera. 
They're known as ridge walkers. I think they'll sometimes lay on their belly on a ridge and observe you. So even though I'm looking for the silhouette of a Bigfoot standing up, I still need to watch for one laying on its belly. I don't think if I told you, but when I was deer hunting, archery, uh, I was on the face in Centerville. Um, I was hiking up, and it was only a glimpse coming across uh, like the, the ridge of something that was massive. And I got excited, and I started running up there, completely thought, forgot, or didn't forget, but I was like, I was running up there. I went from deer hunting mode to, oh, that looked like it could have been Bigfoot. So I started running up there, and I thought, well, maybe it's another hunter. And so I sat there for a while as I was coming down. Um, like probably an hour later, I was coming back down, and there was the guy that had a had a pack on, but they hid the size comparison from where he was when he was coming down to where I was when I seen the seen it individually. It didn't look like it was, it looked bigger than him, but it could have been him. I don't know. It was, I'd like to go check that area out, but it is, well, there's a hiking trail there. I was going to say, I think it might be the area that I seen it might've been private property, uh -huh. but I think that it's open. I was trying to stay on public land also in that mm -hmm. area. Well, I've spent a lot of time on public land um, glassing private property. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, on top of Monte Cristo, we do a lot of big footing up there and leading up to the deer hunt, we see just troves of deer. I mean, hundreds and hundreds. Wow. I just heard a whooping sound. I don't know if that was a dog or coyote, but anyway, we'll see all this wildlife and to get to these public properties we have to drive on a dirt road that goes through private land you're it's okay to drive on the road you just can't get off the road and anyway all of a sudden deer hunt starts and you don't see the deer anymore the deer are just so smart i mean opening day they disappear from public land and they're on these private properties and they just know when and where they're not going to get the pressure and i think bigfoot's the same I think Bigfoot knows the private property areas. I mean, they don't like, oh, this is private property. They just know that there's not the hordes of people. There's not the pressure and they feel a little bit more secure. I agree with that. I mean, that area that you can drive through, that's been private property for years. And uh, I, I agree that it, they know where to go. They know where to, the pressure is and they know what to do. I mean, just like deer, I, I believe Bigfoot are probably just as smart as us, if not smarter. Uh, I mean, because they've been able to go somewhat undetected for thousands of years. I and, just heard a turkey. And deer, I mean, they're smart and they know to stay away. I heard magpies and turkeys. It's really clucking. People talk about uh, Bigfoot being able to mimic other animal sounds. Uh, men do that. And the reason men do that is like turkey. Turkey are really hard to hunt. People will set up a good blind and uh, they'll call them in with calls. Either uh, use some type of a mechanical or a scratching system to make clucks and bring the turkeys in. I mean, Bigfoot may be able to do the same thing, may be smart enough to pull off the same thing. Oh, I've heard uh, people talking about hearing an owl sound. It's, a, it's an owl, but something doesn't sound right about it. Look what Matt found. What a nice dry place to crawl back in to escape the snore or the rain. 
I mean, it's dry down in there. Oh yeah. Well, as much snow as out, and I think that'd be a nice hiding area. I mean, there's lots of places that a big animal could hide in here. We're walking along the edge of the willows since this is where the Bigfoot has been spotted the three times that I know of the people that I know that have seen it here. And then uh, you can't see the mountain beyond these foothills, but um, there's a Francis Peak, which goes up Farmington Canyon from the other side. Um, there's several Bigfoot uh, sightings on that mountain top. Yeah, the clouds are covering that mountain peak. It's much more massive than these. I know you people that live back in the east, what I'm pointing at right here is mountains where you come from. They're foothills here in Utah. I'm trying to figure out if I'm looking at oak brush or maple brush right here. Not saying it's Bigfoot, we're just at a Bigfoot spot, so I like to point it out for people that think that Bigfoot does this. But snap, snaps. Oh, I'll look behind you though, look up here. Snaps. There, it's like up high also. I know, I um, know. if livestock's oh, coming through here, um, cattle and horses ain't gonna snap stuff off up that high and look this isn't weather related people because uh there's no leaves or anything no. to catch the snow well it, it's random though also look at this one this look at this has been twisted it was uh broke there at one time snapped here and there's missing bark, like something grabbed right there and twisted it and broke it. I wonder if certain times of the year, look at how twisted this is. <laughs> you know, I'm not saying this is de definitive proof of Bigfoot. We're just at a Bigfoot sighting location. And this is what we found. That goes all the way back. Let's see. Oh, yeah. It, the, yeah, the, all the snapping stuff, something wants to keep this accessible is what I'm starting to gather. Well, Something or someone. So these trees up here are bent over. And I don't, I mean, that could be weather related. And then you get in here further, you look back here, it looks like they're actually bent over into. Well, we've walked a couple hundred yards of these willows and oak brush and haven't seen anything like that till here. And it's like, something is snapping stuff off to get access back into this dense vegetation and if you watch the three mile trackway of Bigfoot in Minnesota you realize that Bigfoot has a snap a problem snapping habit every opportunity it's snapping twigs branches everywhere it travels oh, these are interlaced right here I think some of the wood knocks people here is it's actually snapping stuff. These are in the lace right there. I know if they do this, I wonder why. Why would they weave a bunch of uh, saplings together like yeah, that? I don't know. And that's that's interesting. There's lots of that one's been bent over down. Yeah, and wedged under. Yeah. This well. This is busted and woven in too. I, you know, this may be a, a shelter spot. I've actually never seen them all like that. Like that. That's. I've seen them woven together like this in different places before. So this, something does this. I doubt it's a person. No. I doubt a person is going to take, see right there how this is rainbowed up over under this. I doubt a person gonna do well, this and look that's the top yeah. of the tree that has been totally rainbowed over and wedged into the ground now when the leaves come in and everything this is going to be a great shelter blind type area mm -hmm. and probably on this property there's really no one no human really comes up in here it's him and his daughter his daughter's 16 17 uh -huh. and i think he's got some cousins but I just don't see a teenage person or a, or one adult having the strength to take that 
sapling that's two to three inches in diameter and being able to no. bend it clear over like that, hold it down, and then uh, weave in other branches to get it to stay like yeah. that. That's that's really interesting. It's it's not natural. Definitely unusual. Not with this type of tree. I mean, quakies do it naturally, but this type. I wish I could see the leaves. I would be able to recognize whether this is a maple brush or oak brush, but either, either one, it's pretty tough to bend it like that. It's torn off, but then it gets laid or wedged. I mean, that is, I can't get it. Oh, oh, it's because it's still oh, connected. Yeah. That's what it was broke from. Oh, it's been broke twice. It got broke back there where it's still yeah. hung up. Connected. And it's broke here. And look, those those fibers look like they've been twisted. Twisted. Well, even these trees, like, that's, they're laid over and pushed in. This branch right here comes from this all the way over and it's shoved in. Yeah, it's unusual. I wish we could see the mountain peaks today instead of these, just these foothills. You people, especially the ones that live back east and in the south, you'd be amazed at how gigantic our mountains are here. That looks yeah. like a shelter down in there. I wanna check it out. You know, a person that's into survival, they'll uh, look to make a shelter in a place that is already partially built by nature and then they'll button it up to their satisfaction. And this, yeah, it looks like something has been using this as a shelter. That is crazy. I know animals like elk will lay down right in the snow and sleep. Their winter coats and stuff just protects them from, I'm sure a Bigfoot could lay down in a spot like that and just be comfortable and hidden and then uh, yeah. protected from rain and snow from above, wind from the sides. You've got this entry here that could be an entry. Then on the other side, it looks like there could be an entry or an exit there. I see a footprint shape in there. I doubt that's what it is. That leaf mat, I'm sure it's a coincidence that that dry spot right there is Bigfoot shaped. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I'm in there looking for Bigfoot tracks. I just, nothing stands out except for that, what's probably a coincidence. It's cool. Yeah. If I was looking for a place to survive for a night out in the wild, that would be at the top of my list right there. Yep. You can get in there, get away from the wind. I mean, it looks like you can still get some in there, but I mean, a rough night, you can, you can shelter out there. Okay, confirmed oak brush. Those are oak leaves. This is oak, and oak produces acorns. And the deer and the elk just love acorns. I'm sure the Bigfoot does too. A lot of Bigfoot sightings that uh, we investigate in Utah, especially in Provo area. When we go there and investigate where the people saw them, they're seeing the creature in the oak brush, and I'm sure the creature's there munching on the acorns and uh, being an opportunative hunter. It's bringing in the animals that eat the acorns. So it's getting acorns, waiting for a better protein meal to come along. And look at all the oak brush surrounding this pasture. Has there been any anything stating that they might eat alfalfa or hay? I've saw reports where people have seen them eating uh, water plants out of uh, freshwater springs. I've also saw uh, people have reported to me like uh, um, this uh, medical doctor in Jarbage, Nevada. She was watching the creature uh, eating uh, aspen leaves. It was reaching up, grabbing branches, bending the branches down to its mouth, and eating the leaves right off of the aspen trees. 
That's interesting. Dr. Leslie Clark. She said I could use her name. <laughs> <laughs> now there's, I think there's a lot of it, a lot of opportunity up here. So yeah, they've been seen eating vegetation. Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, the Bigfoot eating uh, the water plants, a bow hunter come up on it sitting in six foot springs. Saw it sitting in there eating uh, the water weeds till it noticed him and took off into the woods. I see rose hips. See the um, yeah. red over there? Those produce rose hips. Oh, that's whole, that whole side of the bank looks like it has them all over it. Yeah, and rose hips are usually the last fruits that animals eat and a lot of rose hips will make it into the winter and a lot of times in the early spring we'll be up hiking and still finding uh, rose hips on the vines. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. So animals will eat those all winter long. People eat them so I'm sure Squatch does too. Oh, 